I'm Sean from Shooty School. Today we're going to use FL Studio and route out Easy Drummer 3. Let's get started. I'll just start a new session. I'll choose the basic one. And we're going to find Easy Drummer 3 under Plugin Database, Install, Generator, VST3. And you should see Easy Drummer 3 here. You could drag it out to your channel rack. Or go over to your channel rack and look for the plus symbol. Click on it, go to More Plugins, and you'll find Easy Drummer 3 here somewhere. I'll double click on it when I locate it. If you can't find Easy Drummer 3, go to Options, Manage Plugins, and try and reconnect it here. Easy Drummer 3 is a VST3, not a VST2 or a .dll file. So you got to find your VST3 folder on your operating system. So now that we have Easy Drummer 3 here loaded up, I'm going to go over to my details and I'm going to go to my wrapper settings. And here I'm going to go over to processing. Under connections, we'll have all this mapping options right here. Now, by default, if Easy Drummer 3 was playing, it would only be coming out this first channel right here one and two, meaning Easy Drummer 3's stereo master output channel one and two, the left and the right. But what we want to do today is we want to route out all of the 16 stereo outputs that Easy Drummer 3 has so we can better control it mixing in FL Studio. So there's a tiny bit of thinking to do right here, which might be intuitive to you already, but Let's say I already have a session up, like here I have four instruments already up. Let's say I'm using those. So I want to decide not only where Easy Drummer wants to live, in this case it would be channel five, but I need to block out the next 15 channels so we have 16 channels total to work with, you know, so we don't want to overlap any channels. I don't want to assign Easy Drummer three to channel one because my kick is there, all right? So let's open back up the plugin. Processing, connections. And I've decided I want to start routing Easy Drummer on channel five. So I'll take the first channel of Easy Drummer and put it on five. After you decide where you want to start routing Easy Drummer, now you can hit auto map outputs and it will autofill the rest of these fields in sequence. Here we go. So now Easy Drummer is on channels 5 through 20, as we can see here. So that just means channel 5 here, all the way up to channel 20, those channels are standing by to receive Easy Drummer 3's audio, but it's not actually routed there yet. But the legwork has been done in FL Studio. So let's open up Easy Drummer 3. Let's get a beat going. I'll drag this beat out to my channel rack, whatever beat this is. I prefer to use FL Studio in a different way because I'm not really an electronic style musician. I've got a video below if you're curious, but this is probably how most people are typically using FL Studio. They're bringing their MIDI right here. Let me hit play. Now, if you remember, I said Easy Drummer 3 comes out the first channel, which is one and two, and that is why we're only hearing it right here and not through the rest of the tracks that we routed out to. Let me open up Easy Drama 3. We're going to go to the Mixer tab. If we look under the Mixer menu, right now stereo is activated. There should be a check mark next to it, but there's not. What we want is multi channel. If you look below each individual channel, in Easy Drummer 3, we'll see the output is one and two, meaning it's just coming out the left and right speaker of channel five, that's it, channel. So let's watch these output assignments when I switch the mixer menu to multi-channel. Three, two, one, go. Our kick drum's still going out one and two, but our snare, the top mic's going out three, four, and the bottom mic's going out five, six, and so on and so forth. When you select multi-channel, it kind of groups different instruments and shoots them out the same channel. 
That's why the kick's all coming out one, two. So if we look in FL Studio's mixer, now we're utilizing a lot of those uh, 16 tracks that we chose, depending on what instruments we hear in this beat. So that's fine and dandy. Here, let me solo this up. I'll right click on this green dot. There's the kick drum. Here's the snare drum and so on and so forth, okay? We successfully routed, but what if we don't agree with the routing? Let's open up Easy Drummer 3 again. What if I want all three of these separate kick drum microphones to be on separate channels in FL Studio? Well, we can just manually do the routing by selecting this routing menu. So I want the kick in microphone to be on one and two, and I want the kick out microphone to be on three, four. I want the sub microphone to be on five, six. And now here we kind of have to make a decision because Easy Drummer 3 only has 16 channels to work with. And depending on what drums and mixer preset we decide to choose, we might have more than 16 tracks to output. So you have to think, you know, from a utility standpoint, let's start combining some of these Easy Drummer 3 channels into the same output because we only have 16 available. So for me, this is all just an example. How I route this would depend on the song I'm mixing, right? So for example, for me, maybe I could have the top snare mic and the bottom snare mic on the same channel. I could handle treating those together in FL Studio. So I'll combine their outputs. Top mic to 7-8, bottom mic to 7-8. So now these are coming out the same channel in FL Studio. I want the hi-hat to be isolated. All these toms have been combined, but a lot of us like the isolate tom, so I'll give each tom its own channel to work with. It's just an example on how you might think. You can figure this out for your situation. Another example of thinking might be, you know, maybe the ride, the overhead, and the overhead mono. Those are similar frequency style tracks. Maybe I could treat those together, so I'll put those on the same track starting at 21. And I'll do the same routine for the three ambience mics. I'll have them share a track starting on 23 here. Remember, these are stereo outputs, so that's why it says 23, 24. It's two mono tracks combined into one stereo track. And as for the percussion, my personal taste, I don't use them very often in my songwriting and in my productions, but if I change my mind. I don't want them coming out channels one and two. That's where my kick drum is. So let me put them out of sight, out of mine on 3132. I could even eliminate them and put them on none so we'd never hear them whether they're triggered or not. It's up to you. It's just an option. And a last note is this is, you know, if you see a, a channel in here that's not putting out much volume, these are really healthy, but let's say this snare was much quieter or this kick drum was much quieter, you know, I could boost it here a little bit. So my Unity gain in FL Studio actually has a bigger signal. And if you really want to pan more accurately in FL Studio, you might want to reset your pans. I'll just double click these to reset them. Or control click them. So let's take a look. Now the routing is exactly what I want. Channel 5 should just be a single kick drum microphone, not all three together. 6 should be the out. Yep. This should be my sub mic. So everything's working great. At this point, let's say we have, so we've successfully routed Easy Drummer 3 in FL Studio. Awesome, but let's tweak it a little bit. Let's make it a, a better experience, more intuitive. If I had a full session up, maybe I had 30 tracks, maybe I had 100 tracks up, you know, finding where my Easy Drummer 3 tracks are is gonna be a pain in the butt. So let's color and name them. What I might do is hold Control Shift, what I will do, Let's hold Control Shift on Mac. It is uh, Command Shift. I'll click on Track Five where Easy Drummer Three starts. I'll drag it out to 20. Now I have all my Easy Drummer Three tracks selected, and I will right-click, rename color. I'll just rename these Easy Drummer Three for right now. And the color is this gray box here. 
I personally like Easy Drummer to be orange. You know, color it whatever you want, hit accept. And then I hit enter. So here we go. All Easy Drummer three tracks, color coded orange. And then if you have the energy, I don't for this tutorial, you know, you could right click on the first track, rename it to, let's say, kick in. So now we're looking super organized. Now I can see everything at a glance. The routing's working. What a lot of people end up realizing they need to do, which you probably already know, maybe you already know, is I want to take all these 16 tracks and route them to a single bus track. And the reason being is because let's say I wanted to make a big volume adjustment to the whole kit. I don't want to do 16 separate moves or do a quick group and turn them down. I want them all going through a bus, not only so I can help control uh, the volume mute solo, but I also want to be able to treat the whole kit as a whole. So let's do that. I'll do that control shift drag again, command shift on Mac. And then I'll find an empty track, 21 for me is available, and I'll right click on this arrow. Now, route to this track, that's kind of what we want to do, but that is not what we want to do. We want to route to this track only. So this new bus track we're about to make is the master of the other 16. So route to this track only. And as we can see, all of our 16 stereo outs are going to this bus track. So if I mute it, the whole kit goes away, or I can control the volume of this whole kit. It's really fantastic. And I might right click, rename, I'll call this Easy Bus, and I'll color it, but I'm going to color it slightly off orange so I can better identify that this is only a bus. So my routing is now all set up. All the individual tracks are here, plus my bus is here, and maybe I'll select uh, for example, this sub kick drum, maybe for me, since it's a sub mic, it's a little too bassy. So now I might add an effect to it, like an EQ, right? Or better than that, or not better than that, but more popular than that. A lot of people like to EQ or compress this drum bus here. Compressing a bus with all the drums is kind of called gluing the kit back together, which is a great thing. So I might find this bus over here and add my compressor to it and glue the mix back together. So that is the entire point of routing out the Easy Drummer 3. So you can use your third-party plugins or your FL Studio plugins to treat Easy Drummer, which is something you cannot do while inside the mixer tab inside Easy Drummer. So that's it. We kicked some serious butt today. I hope at this point you know how to route Easy Drummer 3 in FL Studio. Check out shootyschool.com for more Easy Drummer 3 courses.